ったねー<笑>
Okay, there. I want to try and measure the maximum flow rate of the Brewista. Oh, okay. So the maximum flow rate of the Brewista is 25 to 27. Okay, that's right. 25 to 27. So imagine the maximum flow rate of this um, kettle is around 27 and I am able to do flow rate of 2 just two okay i have a i have a small kettle here that pours really really good i'm gonna try and and measure the flow rate of this kettle oh so the maximum flow rate of this small kettle is around six can we do Minimal agitation, yes. Okay, before it breaks. Okay, so the minimum flow rate that we can do with this one is 1.5. This is a Hario Zebra. So this is the gooseneck kettle of Hario for their outdoor line. I'm gonna do the maximum first. Oh, so the maximum flow rate of the Hario Zebrang is around 27 to 30 because it has an open spout, right? But if you do it properly, around 27. So the same as the Brovista Artisan Kettle. So let's see the minimum, minimum um, flow rate before it breaks. Oh, okay. So the minimum proper flow rate of this one is 3.6. That's a really nice um, experiment that we did right here. So if you if you compare the flow rate of the Hario Drip Assist versus the flow rate of the Timer Water Dropper, um, the Timer Water Dropper creates minimal agitation whereas the Hario drip assist creates um, sufficient sufficient agitation so as I've showed you from different kettles I showed you the Zebrang this um, this small gooseneck kettle here they they have different flow rates as compared to this one as well and by showing you how, how the different flow rates look like, um, you can decide if you want to buy a Hario Drip Assist versus if you want to buy a Time More Water Dropper. What does it actually mean? If you normally brew your coffee with minimal agitation, you can go for this one. Um, but if you want your coffee with maximum or sufficient agitation, you should go for the Hario Drip Assist. So, for now, um, thank you so much for watching. In the next videos, I'm gonna show you more about coffee. Bye!